Welcome to Choose Life, a program of All Christians Fellowship Mission, a caring church raising Christ's life disciples who will be agents of transformation in the world. Let's now join God's servant, Reverend William Okoye, for the continuation of last week's message. The cross is central to everything that Christianity is. When I hear preachings that are going on today, you can hardly hear people preaching the cross again today. The cross is no more mentioned. In fact, many pastors today like to be called motivational speakers rather than preachers. Because we are ashamed of the cross. We don't want to be identified with the cross. And we have done everything to remove the cross from Christianity so that we can make it look fine for everybody to accept it. And that is my fear that if this continues unchecked, within the next few years, we'll be preaching another gospel, not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the cross is central to the gospel. The cross is central. Paul was talking about the persecution he suffered. He said, Galatians chapter 5 verse 11. Let's look at it. Look at what Paul said about the cross. Galatians chapter 5 verse 11. Let me read it from the Living Bible for the sake of clarity. It says, some people even say that I myself am preaching that circumcision and Jewish laws are necessary to the plan of salvation. Well, if I preach that, I will be persecuted no more. For that message doesn't offend anyone. The fact that I am still being persecuted proves that I am still preaching salvation through faith in the cross of Christ alone. Shout hallelujah. He said, if I stop preaching the cross, everybody will accept my message. But the reason why I'm being persecuted is because of the message of the cross. Whenever I remember this, I ask myself, what is supposed to be our response to all these things that Jesus Christ went through for us? That God insisted that it should be kept before our nose every day of our life so that we can continue to remember what it cost Christ to bring us salvation. So that we will never toy with our salvation. That is why he instituted the whole communion service and baptism. So that that will be reminded us over and over again. So that we can keep our focus and never be distracted. We never play games with our salvation. What does God expect us to do as a result of this? Look at the book of 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14 and 15. From the King James Version, it says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one die for all, then we are all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Shout hallelujah. Now if you read that from the Living Bible, it says, Whatever we do, it is certainly not for our own profit. But because Christ's love controls us now, since we believe that Christ died for all of us, we should also believe that we have died to the old life we used to live. He died for all, so that all who live, having received eternal life from him, might live no longer for themselves, to please themselves, but to spend their lives pleasing Christ, who died and rose again for them. That is what God expects to be our response to this immense, unequaled, ultimate sacrifice that the Son of God made on our behalf. Remember, I'm speaking this morning on life through death. Christianity offers life, eternal life, life to the full, but it makes it plain that the road to this life is death. It underlines this in at least five areas. First of all, we see death and life in relation to our salvation. If you look at John chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the life that Jesus came to offer us began with his death. It is only through death that he could offer life. (laughs) Hallelujah. And then in addition to that, let us look at Romans chapter 6 verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord let's look further the same chapter verse 1 to 4 that is romans chapter 6 verse 1 to 4 what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound god forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein Know ye not that so many of us as we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. 
that like as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. So, salvation demonstrates our death, our burial, and our resurrection with Christ to walk in the newness of life. So, if you don't die, you cannot be buried. And one of the greatest tragedy we have in the church today is that we have a lot of people who call themselves Christians, but they are not yet dead. Until you die to sin and die to the world, you cannot be buried in baptism and you cannot resurrect. If you resurrect, you start walking in the newness of life. We have a lot of people who call themselves Christians who have not gone through this experience. And that's why we have a pack of people in the church who, when you look at their lives, there's nothing to show at all that they've encountered Christ. They are very much alive in sin, alive in themselves. But Christianity invites you to die. When Christ calls you, he calls you to do what? To die to sin, to die to the world, to die to yourself so that you can be buried and rise up again to begin to live a new life in Christ. Hallelujah. The second area that this is clearly manifest in our life as believers is in the area of discipleship. The same principle of life through death operates in discipleship as in salvation. Look at Mark chapter 8. I'm going to read verse 34 and 35. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. You see, the same principle of life through death operates in the area of discipleship. The Romans compelled those they sentenced to death to carry their cross to the site of crucifixion that's a custom in rome anybody that is sentenced to death by crucifixion is usually given the cross to carry to the site of his crucifixion <laughs> praise the lord and when jesus christ was saying anybody who does not deny himself and take up his cross and follow me that's what he had in mind he said this then was the dramatic imagery jesus used for self-denial for if we are following jesus there's only one place to which we can be going the place of death where we are called to die to sin to die to ourselves let's look at romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 8 the Bible said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Hallelujah. They that are in the flesh cannot do what? They cannot please God. Look at verse 12 and 13 of that same portion of scripture. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall do what? You shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Now, in one translation, it says, if you live after the flesh, you die. But if through the Holy Spirit, you starve the flesh to death, through the enabling power of the Holy Spirit, you bring your flesh to a place of starvation to death, you shall live. There's no way you can experience genuine and total freedom and triumph in Christ if you don't live the crucified life. If you don't live a life that is totally dead to the flesh, dead to the things of this world, dead to things that are charming us and drawing us away from the world, you will never come to that place where you can experience liberty, where you can experience the fullness of God, where you can experience the power of God. That is the problem in the church today. Many of us, although we have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have not followed Christ to that point of death 
to the flesh to that point of denying the flesh denying ourselves and taking up our cross and following him that leads to life and the spirit which paul is referring to in this place that will give you divine enablement to live victorious over satan and all the works of the devil over sin live lives that bring great honor and glory to god hallelujah Choose life, Choose life. Choose that you may live, that you may save the Lord. Save. Join us next week for the continuation of this message. Dear listener, thank you for being part of today's program. If you want to enjoy a fulfilling life here on earth and spend eternity with God in heaven, you must receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord. If you want to do so, pray this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I admit I have sinned against you. I confess and repent of my sinful ways. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. Give me the grace to live the rest of my life for you. Thank you for answering my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For the rest of our dear listeners, dear Lord, touch their lives in definite ways. Meet each of them at the point of their needs and help them to be doers of the word they have had today that they may enjoy your goodness the rest of their lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God richly bless you. You've just listened to Choose Life, a program of All Christians Fellowship Mission. I believe God has touched your life through this message from his servant, Reverend William Okoye, the General Overseer of All Christians Fellowship Mission. This message and several others on CDs, DVDs, and books by Reverend William Okoye are available at number two, Lagoni Close, off Nile Street, Maitama, Abuja. Get your copies now. Now. For counseling and prayers, call 0906 3478 207. The number again, 0906 3478 207. For bookings and materials, call 0815 0253 911. Once again, 0815 0253 911. Or log on to www acfmission.org that is www.acfmission.org for resource materials now join our high impact worship service this sunday at any of our branch churches nearest to you jesus saves heals and provides let's meet again same time same station next week for the continuation of this message from reverend william okoye god bless you